Hello, I'm Bob Norton, CEO of Airtight Management and creator of the CEO and Entrepreneur Bootcamp. And this course is on intellectual property. We're going to talk about patents, trademarks, copyrights, and much more. This is a complex topic, and expertise is required. And so, as usual with the CEO Bootcamp, we're going to stay at the high level and really talk about all the things you need to know, give you a lot of references and sources and models that will help you navigate the complex area of intellectual property. Intellectual property is one of the most important categories of ways to create sustainable competitive advantage. And if you've seen our sustainable competitive advantage course, You'll see there are, I think, 11 other ways that you can create those barriers to entry around your business and maintain differentiation. But let's get started by going through the agenda. First, we're going to talk about patents. Patents are probably the most complicated area of intellectual property because patent law is always changing and you've got to find and make sure there isn't what's called prior art or someone that has done a filing or even use this without doing a filing of a patent before. Second, we're going to talk about trademarks. I think all of you probably know what a trademark is, but there are a lot of uh, myths and mis uh, misbeliefs about how trademarks works. And I guarantee you this is going to be worth the price of admission alone because you're going to learn some things of how to save on fees that are not necessary, where most people believe the myth that you need to file a lot of trademarks, pay a lot of fees, pay a lot of lawyer fees and other things. So we're going to show you how to do all that for free, which is the startup way. Third, we're going to talk about copyrights. Copyrights is the cheapest and most powerful and longest lasting way to protect your trade secrets and intellectual property. Uh, and then we're going to talk about trade secrets, okay, which are in, can be embedded in any of these things or not disclosed because you build uh, privacy and physical security and the right contracts to keep your trade secrets secret. Then we're going to talk about contracts. It's very important to have good non-disclosure agreements, NDAs, as well as work for hire agreements with contractors and other things. And we're going to provide you some of those sample agreements as part of the full CEO boot camp. Uh, so you'll have boilerplate documents for those. And then lastly, everything you need to know about building your IP, when to do which things. Of course, we're going to talk about the stage of company development and what's appropriate at each stage. Uh, so let's get going. First, a little quote from Einstein. Einstein uh, was known to have said that imagination is more important than knowledge. For knowledge is limited, whereas imagination embraces the entire world, stimulating progress and giving birth to evolution or revolution. So this, this quote is getting to the, the key fact that I have at the top here. Creativity, imagination, and ideas are sort of the currency of the future. You'll remember from the CEO Boot Camp other sessions that differentiation is the most important thing that you have to make sure your company has. All of the good things that happens to companies generally come as a result of being differentiated. So that's a very focal point of any business model design. And of course, creating unique and exclusive intellectual property is one way to remain differentiated. But you can't protect legal, you can't protect legally ideas. And once that's revealed to the public, people can copy you and clone you. So we're going to dive in to what you can protect and how. Only specific instances of these ideas and ingredients, when they're combined into patents or copyrights, or trademarks and branding can be protected from the public. As a CEO, it's always our job to innovate. Peter Drucker, uh, the father of management, is famous for saying a company's job is only two things, innovation and marketing. And everything else can really be outsourced because it's not the core of your business and your why 
your vision core or what Michael uh, uh, Collins would call your hedgehog concept. What is it that you're going to do better than anyone else in the world invest in and protect? So think a lot about that because every company should be using intellectual property procedures every day in their business. And by the end of this course, you'll understand why. So first, let's talk about what is an idea worth? I would argue that ideas are a dime a dozen, and they're, statistically speaking, almost completely worthless. People make the mistake that thinking the idea is of value, and they go out and try to raise money too early before turning an idea into a business. And investors know that an idea is worthless. It's the implementation of that idea that's worth something. Second, the, even the very best ideas might only earn you a 2 to 5% royalty if you can patent it, and if there isn't another way to do that same thing, we'll talk about the patent uh, picket fence strategy to have multiple patents protecting all the ways to do something. But generally, an idea cannot be protected, and so the question is, what patents can you get to prevent people from doing exactly what you're doing other ways? Then it's important to understand that the vast majority of cases, probably 95 to 98 percent of all revenue, goes to the team that run the company and to the investors or owners that own the company and invest the capital to take the risk. That's just the nature of a capitalistic economy that we have here in the United States and in many other countries around the world. Lastly, there's even a great idea is not necessarily a good business. However, as you may have learned in our other segments, innovation and product development uh, and sustainable competitive advantage, the creativity in creating and designing a business model to leverage that idea, or more appropriately, that set of intellectual property that's protectable, is what turns a worthless idea into a valuable business and creates wealth. A great example of a, a wonderful idea, a unique idea, that never earned a dime, even though it was properly patented, is the geosynchronous orbit. If you don't know what that is, that's placing a satellite at the equator exactly the distance from the Earth that allows it to essentially hover over the same point on the Earth at all times, so that the rotation of the Earth is the same as the orbital satellite's speed, and so it sits there permanently and it's in a very valuable uh, position. Now, of course, there's only so many of those in the circumference of that orbit around the Earth, and someone was smart enough to understand this and patent it. Problem is, they patented it long before it was possible to put a satellite into orbit, and the patent expired long before they could get royalties from that patent. So that would have been a better one to file after Sputnik, the first Russian satellite, went into orbit. And it was possible, so it wasn't burning the years on the patent without being able to collect any revenue on the patent. So potentially, the person who filed that patent could have made a fortune by licensing all of the parking spaces around the Earth above the equator for 17 years, or, or maybe it would have taken five years to move from Sputnik to putting satellites up there, who knows? But in that case, he would have had 12 years of collecting royalties on that patent. So a great example of how even a great idea cannot always be a good business, and most aren't. So statistically speaking, and this is a myth that's got to be blown up, that comes from trade and press people that don't know much about entrepreneurship, believing there's a million dollar idea out there. Well, there isn't a million dollar idea, unless you can patent it, unless you can keep other people doing it, or unless you can be years ahead of everyone else trying to do 
that same idea and build barriers to entry that create sustainable competitive advantage around that business. So it's a very tiny fraction, even of patents that are successful, that will generate a lot of money for the patent owner or filer. You not want to be stealthy and, and wait until launch to reveal this and probably wait until you need to expose it to even file the patent. And we'll get into the details of that shortly. So here are the typical symbols that the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office and their counterparts in all other 450-odd countries or whatever it is that has an intellectual property government organization to administer these. And you're probably familiar with all these already, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. But obviously, trademark is what you put on something while you're filing for registration. And that moves to being a registered trademark with the circle R over it only after that registration is granted. And you're going to learn a secret about that shortly and why a tra you can have as many trademarks as you want at no cost at all. Service mark is essentially the same thing, but for a service instead of a product. The C with a circle around it is short for copyright. And of course, the P is sort of a, a symbol for a patent or patented. And usually people will list the actual patent number. So all of these are administered and handled by the USPTO at USPTO.gov. You can search patents for free. You can search trademarks for free. You can even use that as an idea generator and as a competitive intelligence tool to find people who may have registered trademarks that have something to do with your future or current business. So patent and trademark searches are free. I would never recommend that you go out and pay someone to do that because it's both easy and more educational as well as free to do it yourself. And most of this can be done yourself with, you know, without expensive legal fees. And then you bring in the lawyers when things get complex and you flushed out the idea and you're sure there's a revenue opportunity there to pay for that investment in your intellectual property documentation and filing. So let's now get into copyrights. Copyrights, as you may know, are the easiest and longest way to protect original works of art. So that can be books and movies, it can be pictures. Uh, it can actually be the notes you're taking right now for the seminar. And the law changed a few decades back to automatically copyright everything. So literally, you already have copyrights of everything you've created and listed in your business and you just need to begin to mark them. Now, why are copyrights great? Well, first of all, the copyright lasts for 99 years. It used to be 50 years, and Disney lobbied to get it put to 99 years because Mickey Mouse was about to expire, and so they pushed through Congress the fact that these artistic works should last longer because they're not only owned by a person, more often than not, they're owned by a corporation which has an almost unlimited life or a much longer life than an individual, potentially. 